Good evening, campers. Um, it's Thursday evening, and uh, our devotional tonight is going to be about Gideon and um, how uh, how he was in the middle of the storm and what he did to get out of it. Uh, first of all, before we start, I'd like to introduce. I've got some helpers with me tonight uh, to help us sing some songs. Um, the first one is is my mother. Um, the next one is my dad, and dad's done a lot of things down at camp to help get it ready for um, for camp, like doing electrical stuff, things of that nature. Um, next is Kara. Um, most of you know her. Uh, she's been a camper and uh, staff down there for a long time. And then, of course, my wife. And my wife is the popcorn lady. If you remember the popcorn, she most of you like that, so uh, she's going to be helping us. Um, and then my brother-in-law, Steve. Steve uh, taught classes and done stuff at camp as well, helping get ready. And filming tonight is my sister, Kathy. Um, she was actually a cook down at fifth and sixth grade week when I first started. So um, so they're going to help us out a little bit tonight uh, with, with some of the singing. And we're going to start out by singing uh, about four songs and we'll do our lesson. Uh, the first one is I Will Call Upon the Lord. I will call upon the Lord, who is worthy to be praised. So shall I be saved from my enemies. The Lord liveth, and blessed be the rock, and let the God of my salvation be exalted. The Lord Blessed be the rock, and let the God of my salvation be exalted. I will call upon the Lord, who is worthy to be praised. So shall I be saved from my enemies. The Lord liveth, and blessed be God of my salvation be exalted. The Lord liveth, and blessed be the rock, and let the God of my salvation be exalted. I will call upon the Lord. Our next song is going to be The Battle Belongs to the Lord. In heavenly armor will enter the land, the battle belongs to the Lord. No weapon that's fashioned against us will stand, the battle belongs to the Lord. And we sing glory, honor, power, and strength to the Lord. We sing glory. comes in like a flood, the battle belongs to the Lord. He's raised up a standard, the power of his blood, the battle belongs to the Lord. And we sing glory, honor, power and strength to the Lord. We sing glory, honor, power and strength Presses and hard, do not fear. The battle belongs to the Lord. Take courage, my friend, your redemption is near. The battle belongs to the Lord. And we sing glory, honor, power, and strength to the Lord. We sing glory, honor, power, and strength. Of course, a camp favorite, um, light the fire. I stand to praise you, but I fall to my knees. My spirit is willing, but my flesh is so weak. 
like to find in my soul when you stand in awe. You are beautiful beyond description, too marvelous for words, too wonderful for comprehension, like nothing ever seen or talking about Gideon and how he uh, became in the middle of the storm and what he did in order to to be able to um, to get out of that and how he relied on the Lord um, and what happened was the Israelites didn't listen to God and because of that the Midianites came and started giving them a hard time taking away uh, their food taking away the, their animals, their livings, uh, to the point where they had to, they had to go and, and basically hide in caves in order for them to survive. And so then what happened was uh, they cried out to the Lord, and the Lord, the Lord decided, okay, I'm going to do something about this. And he decides that he's going to choose Gideon uh, to go and, and fight the battle for him. So what happens is, an angel comes to Gideon, and he says, The Lord is with you, you mighty man of valor. So he, the angel was actually saying, Look, you know, we, the Lord believes in you. Um, you're a mighty man of valor. That means you're brave. You're, you're ready to do this. So then Gideon says, Well, if God's with us, why are all these bad things happening? Um, and, and if you look at what's going on in our world today, um, Sometimes we, we might be looking around going, why are all these bad things happening? Um, but the Lord is there. And the angel comes back and says to him um, that he's going to go and he's going to save Israel. So then Gideon's response is, um, well, I'm a nobody. I can't do anything. 
I, I, I'm the, the smallest of my, my family. Uh, I'm, I'm not, I'm no big deal. And sometimes we feel like that, don't we? Whenever we're, we're out and, and people are expecting us to do things and we feel like we can't do them for whatever reason. Um, and we need to remember that we're capable of doing anything when God's on our side. So um, Gideon says that, and then the angel's response is, I will be with you, and you'll defeat the Midianites like you're one man. You'll be able to destroy them easily. So Gideon says, okay, well, um, can you stay here for a minute? I want to make you some food. So Gideon goes in, and he makes some food. And what he makes is he gets um, some lamb, and he makes uh, some cake, uh, bread cakes type of things, and um, he has some broth that he go that goes with that. So I have a sample of that right here, and uh, when when he comes out with it, the angel says, "Well, pour the broth over top of it. Pour the broth out all over the top of the the food that you just made." And the angel says, he goes, I get this started. The angel touches it. And guess what? All of that burn up. To show, to show Gideon that the Lord is on his side, that he can do this. That, and, and proved to, with the angel proven to him that the Lord was the one who sent him. The Lord wants Gideon to go out and fight the battle for Israel. So um, he does that, it burns, burns it up, and then all of a sudden the angel's gone. The angel leaves, and later that night, while Gideon's resting, um, the Lord comes to him again. And the Lord says, okay, Gideon, here's what I want you to do. I want you to go in, and they, they had they had a, an altar that was probably similar to this fire ring, in, in a way. They had some type of altar there, and what they also had near the altar was a statue to their god, Baal, the god that they were worshiping, which wasn't the true god, and that was that was where the problem was. So the 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 Lord says. Uh, tells Gideon he says you know what here's what I want you to do I want you to go in there and destroy that entire altar the altar that they have that they're gonna um, worship Baal with and then what I want you to do is cut down that idol it's not gonna be here anymore I I'm getting rid of that if, if the Israelite people are gonna follow me they need to get rid of that so um, he, he Gideon doesn't do it during the day because he knows if he tries to do that during the day that the people will stop him. So he waits till evening, till overnight, and he goes out and he tears down the altar of, of Baal and he builds up an altar to the Lord. And when he does that, the wood that he uses for the fire to make the sacrifice to God is this wood the idol goes right in the fire and he burns it up because the Lord doesn't want it there anymore and he gets rid of it just like the Lord says well this is when Gideon gets into the middle of the eye of the storm because what happens then is the next day the the people of the village come out and they're like wait what wait what happened where's where's our God at what Where, where's who cut down our idol? How could you guys let this happen? Who did this? We need to get rid of that person. And so they find out that it's Gideon. And they have Gideon's, they, they go to Gideon's dad and try to convince him to, to um, bring Gideon out. And he goes, I'm not doing that. I said, he, he, he basically says, you guys are worshiping the wrong God. And so they, they get mad, the people of the village, the Midianites and um, some other people people from the surrounding area decide you know what we're going to come up and, and take out this Gideon guy because he's destroyed our idol 
guess what? If your idol is a piece of wood, what good does that do? You know what it serves? It serves for you to burn it up in the fire, and that's what happened to it. And this was in order for the people to see that, um, that God needed to be first. So that's the reason God had them do that. Um, so what happens is then Gideon's still a little bit unsure. He says, I, I don't know. I don't know, Lord. Are you sure you want me to do this? Can, can you give me a sign? Can you give me some kind of sign? So what he does is he takes a fleece like this from a sheep and he puts it on the ground. Now, if, you, if you've ever been outside like we are at camp, what happens when you guys walk down from the village? Your feet get all wet in the morning, right? Because there's dew all over the ground. The ground's all wet. So Gideon says, okay, Lord, um, if, if you truly want me to do this, then make the fleece that I put down all wet and the ground all around it dry. So the next day when he comes up, he, he was able to pick it up pick up the fleece, the ground is all dry, and he wrings out a, a bowl full of water out of this. Because the Lord saturated it to make sure that he knew that um, that he had done it. So Gideon's like, um, well, Lord, um, don't get mad at me, but can you show me another sign? So that sign wasn't didn't convince Gideon, but then the next day he puts it back down and he says, um, Lord, this time, can you make the ground all over the place all wet so so that I, I can tell that, that the wetness is there and then make that fleece totally dry. So when he comes out the next morning, guess what? Ground's all wet, wet around it. The fleece is dry. So finally, finally Gideon's like, okay, I, I believe you. I, I know you're going to be with me. And, and then it's like, okay, what do you want me to do now? Because the Midianites had thousands and thousands of people there. There, there are so many people that they couldn't count, couldn't count them. That's pretty scary when you think about it because um, Gideon didn't have that many people with him. So, in fact, when they start out, there's 32,000 people um, that were on Gideon's side. And the Lord says... Okay, Gideon, here, here's, where, here's where our issue is. If I give them into your hand, if I let you win the battle with 32,000 people, then you're going to think that you guys did it. So he says, what I want you to do is go, go to the 32,000, and you tell them anybody that's afraid, that isn't sure about this battle, that doesn't know whether they want to do it, tell them they can go home. So guess what? 22,000 of them leave. They had 32 and 22,000 of them left. They're like, I'm out. I'm afraid. I'm going home. So they all leave, which leaves them with 10,000 people left. And, and guess what? The Lord says, you know what? Still got too many. So um, what, what he has them do is he said, okay, take those 10,000 men down to the, down to the river and tell them to drink. Any any of them that, that just bend over like this and drink out of the out of the river, put them in one spot. And anybody that lifts it up like this and drinks, put them in another spot. And when it came down to it, there were three hundred out of the ten thousand that went like this and lifted it up and drank out of their hand. Now, why do you think that's a smart move? Well, it's because if you're if you're doing that, you're alert. You're seeing what's going on around you. The other guys are bent down looking into the water, and they'll never see the enemy coming. So God says, take those 300 with you. So they take the 300, and uh, he he decides to get them get them ready for their battle. And and what he tells the 300, which when you got that many other people on the other side, you better be relying on the Lord or you're going to be in trouble so he takes the 300 and he says okay each one of you I want you to carry a lamp I want you to have a trumpet and then whenever I give you the signal I want you to shout the sword of the Lord and of Gideon so they all got in their places and surrounded the the enemy and then he gave them the command 
to go ahead and, and do what he said to do. So, what happens is after, after they do that, the Midianites wake up in the middle of the night and they're all confused and they start fighting each other and killing each other and chasing each other off. Uh, a lot of them ran away. And, and um, so, so God used 300 men to take out a multitude of men in, in the battle. And that's how, that's how Gideon got out of the eye of the storm. Even though the numbers didn't look good, you think, oh, well, there's no way you're going to win the battle with only 300 men. With God, you can. And that's how we get out of the storms. There's so many things going on in this world right now. We've got the virus going on. We've got other scary things that are happening in, in cities and other places. Um, you know, so many things that, that can could scare us and make us feel like we're in a storm and we're all by ourselves. But we're not. God's with us. And as long as God's with us, it doesn't matter how many people, other people are with us because we're going to win the battle. And that's what it's all about. It's important that we, we remember that even though we feel like we're in the eye of a storm, the Lord is with us and we can make it through, through this. Um, that's the lesson. We're going to try a couple more songs here before we close out in a prayer. Um, and we're going to sing Pierce My Ear. Now that's one that people seem to like. Here's my try one here even though we've got a small group um, it's a song that we've been teaching the kids you guys for um, a couple years now it's the greatest command so we're gonna try to sing it um, with our group and and uh, see how it comes out love one another or love Oh uh -huh.
dad to go ahead and close us in prayer, and then I'll have a couple comments out. We praise you, O oh God, our Father in heaven. What a privilege it is for us to call you Father. What a privilege it is to worship you and sing praises to you. Lift up your high and holy name. We are thankful that we are your children. We are thankful that you have given us so much in life. We're thankful for the examples of Gideon and the men of old who are faithful to serve you. And we ask, Father, that you'd give us the courage and strength to imitate them, to be the kind of servants you want us to be. Give us strength, give us wisdom, give us the right kind of mind to do things in this life that bring honor and glory to your name. And we pray it all in Jesus' name. And amen. Um, I want to thank my helpers tonight. I uh, appreciate them uh, helping us do this virtual camp. Um, hopefully, you guys have been having a good time with this. We'll have one more night on Friday that we'll be able to do some things. Um, so hopefully you'll tune in for that. I uh, just want to thank everybody that's involved with this. And um, hopefully next year we can be back to camp like we normally are and we can have a good time there. Um, the most important thing is uh, to remember that the Lord is there for us. He gives us our strength and with him we can do anything. Um, guess we'll sign off for now. And